This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Tonight, remembering a young Metro police officer killed in the line of duty, family, friends, and colleagues of 24-year-old Brianne Leith are now beginning the long goodbye. And just a short time ago, a somber journey through the streets of Indianapolis. Dozens of officers joined the caravan as Brianne Leith's body was taken from the Marion County Coroner's Office to Crown Hill Funeral Home. People are posting all over social media, sharing their stories of Officer Brianne Leith doing good in the community. The head of the Fraternal Order of Police is asking people tonight to rally together after losing a beloved officer. We're told Officer Leith had an affinity for helping children and also had a son of her own. Her fellow officers who are committed to never leaving families families of the fallen behind now include Bree's son. You don't have to worry about your children or your family. So uh, we will uh, thoroughly uphold that and uh, he will remain a part of this family. He just inherited uh, thousands of mom and dads. So her family says she had a lifelong desire to serve this community. She not only served with IMPD, but also worked in the Marion County Sheriff's Office and was in the Army National Guard. Bree's sisters, mom and dad, all work in law enforcement too. Rick Snyder says that she wasn't just a hero for what happened yesterday, but what she did on a daily basis, fulfilling the perfect image of a police officer. Single mom Amber Harrison is just one of many who says she was lucky enough to meet Officer Brianne Leith. Harrison's son first met Leith and other officers at a day camp. He gave them a note inviting them to come to his house. Harrison says she was surprised when Leith actually showed up. She says Officer Leith took time to get to know the family. Harrison says Leith always made sure the kids had supplies for the school year and she even got them a fish for Christmas. When she showed up, just, I mean, you could tell this is where she wanted to be. She wasn't, she didn't do it because someone told her to. She did it because she wanted to be here. She wanted to make sure that my kids were okay and that I was okay. Harrison says her son now hopes to follow in Officer Brianne Lee's footsteps and one day become an officer himself. And here's the man under arrest for killing Officer Leith. Elias Dorsey faces preliminary charges of murder and attempted murder. Leith was among officers who responded to the call at an apartment yesterday on the east side. Police say that as officers knocked on the door of the apartment, shots were fired through the structure, striking Leith. Another woman, a civilian, was injured in the shooting. The latest now on the coronavirus and its impact in Indiana. 55 more Hoosiers have died from COVID-19. The largest day-to-day -day increase in reported numbers to date. The latest now, 46 of those occurred in the past seven days. That makes a total of 300 who have died from the virus in Indiana. 568 new cases have been reported for a total of about 6,900. More than 35,000 people have now been tested. We know times are tough right now for small businesses. You've seen the We're Open Indie campaign highlighting local businesses that continue to serve you during this pandemic. And so it made perfect sense for us to team up with the Indie Chamber for their Buy Indie campaign. RTV6's Lauren Casey shows what Buy Indie is all about and how you can now take part. I think that the Hoosiers are strong, hospitable, and helping people by nature. And I think we're seeing that now more than ever. So we want to continue that momentum. Josh Baker runs Hi-Fi Indie, a 400 capacity concert and special events venue nestled in the heart of Fountain Square. Obviously, everyone's affected, everyone in different ways. You know, the music and events industry is... Is, is one that is pretty hard hit. With the necessary efforts to flatten the curve, industries like entertainment are being hit hard by COVID-19. It impacts us, you know, two, three, four months down the line just because of the, the routings of the tours and, and all the other logistics that go into that. The Indianapolis region is home to just under 43,000 small businesses. And those businesses employ more than 500,000 people. So the Indy Chamber is launching a new campaign called Buy Indy, a huge push to support, engage, and promote our local small businesses. Our hope is that, number one, people stay healthy and they slow the spread of the disease. 
Um, and then second, they support their local businesses by buying Indy. Joe Pellman with the Indy Chamber says with RTV6, the campaign will work to push out the stories and messages of these businesses to consumers in our community. And so here's what you as a business owner need to do. Um, take out their smartphones, um, shoot a 30 second video, um, submit it to buyindy.org. Um, and then we'll share that on our social channels. As for us consumers, we have a role as well. Every dollar really helps because we have none coming in. Um, so that that's that, that goes straight to most of our staff, keeping our employees employed and our lights on and, and rent paid. Our dollars, whether it be your stimulus check or not, can help our neighbors like Hi-Fi Indy stay afloat. So I think it's now even more important that if folks are going to give up their hard-earned discretionary dollars, that they think about where they're going to spend that money. We're Working for you, Lauren Casey, RTV6. Now, if you're a business and would like a promo kit or someone who is looking to support local businesses, just head to buyindy.org. RTV6 is proud to be working together with the United Way of Central Indiana. We're teaming up for the COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. The initiative supports organizations that serve people and families affected by the pandemic. You can donate to the fund by texting HELP2020 to 91999. A local church is doubling up on a good deed this Good Friday. Grace United Methodist Church bought 109 meals from Mi Pueblo restaurant. And right now, they're giving those meals to healthcare workers at Homeview Health and Rehab. Organizers say they're on a mission with two objectives here. Supporting a local restaurant during the COVID-19 crisis and showing appreciation to healthcare heroes on the front lines of this pandemic. So Grace partnered with us today to bring us hope and joy. And we decided together, let's do this on Good Friday. What uh, Christ did for us, we're bringing that message to our employees. I think this is just a small gesture of kindness towards people who are doing good work. And we want to celebrate that. I think Franklin is a, the kind of community that wants to do the right thing and we've done the right thing over the years and we want to continue to display that kind of generosity. It's just nice to know that people truly realize how much um, we are doing here to keep their loved ones safe. Um, and yeah, it's, it's definitely appreciated. Thank you, everyone. And the food provided today will feed three shifts at Homeview. As COVID-19 continues to spread across the country, for some people just going to the grocery store is too risky for their health. Kelsey Anderson shows us how a local company is hoping to help those in need. Well, the folks at Williams Comfort Air and Mr. Plummer say it's time for them to stop just being technicians and it's time for them to get out in the community and help in the best way they can. HVAC and plumbing is considered essential, but the company is taking preventative measures a step further and they aren't doing any non-essential calls like preventative maintenance and tune-ups. But they still want their employees to maintain a full work week. So now they will do free grocery deliveries for doctors, nurses, first responders, and anyone who is considered high risk in their service area. This is a win-win. It allows our team to maintain their hours. Uh, but also allows them to to get a di little different little different feel. We're here for we're here for whoever needs us. All you have to do is place an online grocery order for pickup anytime between eight and five Monday through Friday. The only information they need is your address, the confirmation number, and the store location. You can call and schedule a delivery on the same day or even a week in advance. All they need to know is when and where they need to be so they can help you. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. And thank you, Kelsey. I'll take you from the grocery list to the weather menu. Temperature this morning, 31 degrees. No frost because it was so windy. Tomorrow morning, I think we'll have widespread frost. The sky is clearing. Just look out your window and the wind is calming down. Temperature 49 in Tipton, 51 in Martinsville. We should be at 62 this time of year. Temperatures cold enough for that frost and freeze warning. The freeze warning in eastern Indiana and then much of Ohio. There'll be several opportunities for frost across the state as we go through the seven day forecast, which you'll see in a little bit. Here are the low temperatures you'll wake up to to start your Easter weekend. I'll take you through the hourly Saturday forecast and we'll look at Easter Sunday as well coming up. Small businesses are feeling a huge crunch during the coronavirus crisis. Owners hear promises of help on the way, but are those promises being kept? We look into that issue coming up next.
Stream it live on CourtTV.com. Small businesses are often called the backbone of the American economy, but the coronavirus is putting many of them in danger of closing because of sharp declines in business. And as Maya Rodriguez reports, a federal loan program that's supposed to come to the rescue is falling short. In her hands, Toby Whitman carries her pride and joy, as well as her livelihood. We source everything from as nearby as possible. The Floristones Little Acre Flowers in Washington, D.C., a small business with six employees. And lately, business has been tough. And that's when we thought to ourselves, oh, wow, this is really going to be um, a big deal for our business. And it has. Their flower orders for events, gone. That side of the business, down 100%. The shop is surviving on a small number of daily flower deliveries and we're dipping into the savings that we have to, to keep people on board. The federal government recently passed the $2 trillion CARES Act. In it, there's more than $349 billion for small businesses in something called the Paycheck Protection Program. It's designed to help small businesses hold on to their employees. Billions of dollars in small business loans have already been processed through Paycheck Protection Program, so we went out on Friday and literally it's become so popular. It's been worked with the banks. They get it to the small business. But it hasn't worked quite as smoothly as that. Banks report a confusing lending program process, which is limiting their ability to get those emergency loans out to small businesses. Wells Fargo announced it would no longer be accepting any more new applications, saying the bank already reached the program's $10 billion loan maximum. That prompted the Federal Reserve to announce it would now allow the bank to go beyond that amount. And the Small Business Administration's computer servers crashed as banks attempted to submit those loan applications. So fresh, an amazing amount of variety. Toby Whitman says they plan to apply for the federal loan. But in the meantime, they've also applied for a small business grant from the city to help stay afloat. We're small business, we're like a family. And keep the door to Little Acre Flowers open for as long as possible. In Washington, D.C., I'm Maya Rodriguez reporting. Coming up, this is going to be an Easter like no other. Churches are finding new ways to reach out to their congregations, but some leaders are planning an old-fashioned service, and that has health officials concerned. And enjoy what should be a beautiful sunset this evening. We'll talk about the changes for the weekend and the pattern for next week. Coming up. Honda of Fishers. Christians around the world are celebrating Good Friday today and preparing for a much different kind of Easter Sunday. Many services will now be held virtually, while some pastors are defying stay-at-home orders and welcoming parishioners despite the health risks posed by the coronavirus pandemic. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports from Los Angeles. From a nearly empty St. Peter's Basilica to small towns around the world, COVID-19 changing the way the faithful celebrate this Holy Week and Passover. Jewish families hosting virtual seders and churches holding Good Friday services online, prepared to do the same on Easter Sunday. This is one time when I believe that Frankly, we are doing God's will by not going to church. Even Paris's Notre Dame live streaming this Good Friday. Sharing the cathedral's first service since last year's devastating fire. Well, thank you very much. And at the White House, President Trump observing Holy Week with this message. Though we will not be able to gather together with one another as we normally would on Easter, we can use the sacred time to focus on prayer. Dr. Anthony Fauci on CNN stressing the importance of social distancing. I know, particularly in a season like the Easter season and Passover, how difficult that is. But we really need to do it because it is working. A message being challenged by some church leaders in states that don't have religious exemptions to stay-at-home orders. They're trying to take down our great nation by shutting the doors to the church but we will not let them. Pastor Tony Spell of Life Tabernacle Church says even though he's faced misdemeanor charges for defying Louisiana's ban on large group gatherings, he still plans to welcome parishioners this weekend. Nothing is going to detour that Easter Sunday service from occurring. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles.
Well, Easter won't be the same this year, but dozens of foster families certainly got a basket full of goodies. I-Town Church and the Department of Child Services hosted a drive through food distribution event at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. The drive through was specifically for foster parents. They received groceries and Easter activity bags and other items. Tomorrow and Easter Sunday, the two warmest days in my forecast. Not bad timing. We get the warmth on the weekend, but warmth is redefined as anything around 60. Then it's like a ski slope straight down. And it's a good analogy to mention ski slope because I think next Wednesday, just like last night, we may have a few snow showers around. Let me show you. I think you'd appreciate this. I stopped my, my daughter's office today. Uh, she works on the other side of the basement from me. <laughs> and so I didn't have to go very far. I've got a home weather office here, and uh, she's working remotely from her job, too, just around the corner. Occasionally, i got to be honest, I hear a yoga class going on over there. Temperatures, they're in the upper 40s, 48 in Greenfield, 49 in Tipton. Temperatures elsewhere in the lower 50s. Our temperatures tonight are poised to drop into the frosty region of, say, 33 to about 36. Temperature tomorrow afternoon, 60. Our rain chances increase tomorrow evening. Evening. If you need to mow the lawn, get some yard work done, do that before, say, 5 o'clock. Showers and some thunderstorms on Easter Sunday. The thunderstorms most likely later in the day, and then we'll have a round of storms, I think, Sunday night into Monday. That will open the door to consistently cool temperatures next week. Tomorrow, upper 50s to low 60s after about 5 o'clock. Our rain and thunderstorm chances will increase. There's 5 p.m. Notice western Indiana, some rain arriving. That will push north and east. This model may be a little overly aggressive, but we'll trust it for now and get your work done outside before uh, the early evening, and then they'll just be scattered as we go through the overnight. Easter Sunday, a few showers in the morning. Temperatures right around 60 for the afternoon high temperature. I want to point out the Gulf Coast states, Mississippi, Alabama, portions of Louisiana, a bullseye for severe weather potential Sunday. We'd be on the northern fringe of that whole weather system, but we'll keep our eye on the potential strength of storms. There are your morning showers on Easter. As we go into the afternoon, still some lingering showers, and I think late in the night then is when we'll inherit the line of thunderstorms that will do this to our temperatures. Knock those back into the 40s for highs consistently Monday through Friday, maybe the entire work week with temperatures not hitting 50 degrees. And then Wednesday, a rain-snow mix potential. How about that? Some of you saw snow showers last night. We'll be back with more 6 News right after this. Donation will volunteer today. Crystal Catering and a Classic Party Rental are trying to keep employees who are off the job fed, healthy, and motivated. This was the scene outside of Crane Bay. It's a drive through for workers to get a box full of food, including rolls of toilet paper. More than 100 people who would normally be preparing and serving meals were not forgotten by their employers as they all hope to return to work soon. And while grocery chains like Kroger and Trader Joe's are buckling down on returns, other retailers are loosening their policies. Apple was always pretty strict with enforcing their 14-day return window. But since their stores are closed, they're giving customers 14 days from whenever they reopen. Target won't take any in-store returns until at least April 16th. After that, they'll give customers three weeks to bring in items purchased before then. Kohl's and Macy's already have huge return windows, but they're ex extending them even more. Kohl's customers have 180 days, but for the first 30 days after they reopen, they'll take items purchased outside of that time frame too. And Macy's is giving customers 120 days on most items. Mark and Amanda, I found my way around social distancing hanging out with my dad. I found a cardboard cutout of him here in one of our storage rooms. So he, he's come out of the closet and here he is. Joining us, I don't think in his career he ever had to work from home, but he gets to join me. I think I'm going to have to find your cutout now and bring it next to me, Kevin. Here, I'm going to take him up for dinner. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Stuffed in the we'll basement closet there. All right. Kevin, Thanks for joining back. us for the news. <laughs>